Thank you very much. Um, as many of you can see, uh, you probably haven't seen me in glasses, but I'm fighting an eye infection. Um, but my vision is pretty clear, and my vision for this group here is that it, there is great passion, there is great purpose uh, to have such an incredible turnout today. Um, we know that uh, many of you are Rotarians, but many of you obviously are LSU football fans. So um, we thank you for being here today. Um, for me, uh, this is the time of season that we get so excited about. Um, our staff is in, uh, we've begun meetings. Um, our players are on a bit of a respite. Uh, they had been training all summer. Uh, we've given them a little time off for those that are not in summer school right now. Um, so they can get ready uh, for, for the long season. Um, I think uh, it was mentioned that there was a, um, a Midwesterner here back in 2000, um, and, and many, many people talked about me coming down from the Midwest and how, you know, how would coach fit in uh, down here in the South. Well, I can tell you that when you have such passionate fans, when you have such purposeful fans, when you have the food that you have here <laughs> and, and the uh, friendship and family um, and the love of football, how could you not fit in uh, immediately? And, and we've loved it down here and um, we, we consider it home already. And so from that perspective, I, I don't care where you're from. Uh, when, when you're a football coach and you get an opportunity uh, to be the head coach at LSU, it's really simple for me um, 32 years of being a head football coach, um, I have a plan, and, and my plan is, is pretty simple. Um, I've used it pretty much for my entire career. Certainly, I've learned along the way um, through mistakes uh, that I've made, uh, and I've um, made the adjustments accordingly um, to be better uh, at my job. But, but I will say this, that uh, the things that I look for are putting together high performance organizations, first of all. When we talk about high performance, we're talking about uh, the staff necessary uh, to develop, to collaborate, um, to uh, be together on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, to develop uh, our student athletes to be the best versions of themselves in all facets, from academics to nutrition. Um, from strength and conditioning uh, to player development, from mental performance to mental health. And so those high performance teams are what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so you don't have to be from Louisiana or Alabama or Mississippi or Michigan. You need to be aware of what your charge is on a day-to-day -day basis and what your why is. And my why is to develop 18 to 21 year olds on a day-to-day -day basis. So we've put together what I consider the best high performance team in all of the United States. And I have that support from President Tate and Scott Woodward and Verge and the entire administration here. Uh, we are in lockstep and, and there is great um, vision together about how to do that. And to have the resources here at LSU to first and foremost put that high performance team together. The second thing that I've done my entire career and, and feel as though this is an essential part of the building block is that it's about player led um, teams. You know when you have successful football teams when that locker room is led by the players. And so make no mistake about it, the ability to have a player led culture when players are holding each other accountable on a day-to-day -day basis, when you're working on helping them become better young men on a day-to-day -day basis, better leaders, and make no mistake about it, we have to help them become better leaders. We have to show them what leadership is about. But that accountability on a day-to-day -day basis helps them build themselves to be the best version of themselves as well. So when those players lead, when they're accountable, you can see that take place on Saturdays. You can see it take place in the classroom and in the community. 
So my job in that second pillar for me is building player-led cultures on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think the third part is having a positive teaching environment. And that positive teaching environment is so when every young man comes into our charge that they feel as though they're being given the opportunity to be coached and developed in a positive manner. You're going to see that, that when we interact with our players, we're demanding, but never demeaning. We're going to demand the very best because that's what you come to LSU to expect. Our mission here at LSU is to graduate champions. Graduate champions. And so that's our standard. So we're going to be demanding. But we're going to do it within a positive environment on a day-to-day -day basis. So we can get the best out of you every single day. So you don't have to be from any particular state, but you have to have those pillars in place on a day-to-day -day basis. So when we talk about our mission, we lay down the vision, and what we do is we build traits in our players, traits of excellence on a day-to-day -day basis. Every single day, we're working on habits, habits that our players will have on a day-to-day -day basis, so they're doing the little things the right way. So you're not scratching your head going, why did he jump offside on fourth down? Why did he blow that coverage? As we're working on those habits of doing the little things the right way every single day. So my toughest days are on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, <laughs> Friday. And I'm going to sit back with you on Saturday and enjoy the game. Because that's how I like to coach. I want to have fun on Saturday, just like you do. And I really don't worry about wins and losses. I know you have to win. I know you got to win them all here at LSU. <laughs> and that's just fine by me. But I really concern myself with, for our guys, thinking the right way, having great habits. If they do that, then the outcome will take care of itself. If we focus on these important principles and focus on the process of great habits, thinking the right way, then we're all going to have very good Saturdays sitting in traffic jams after the games. Because <laughs> we're going to have a W. My way of bad humor here, officers. <laughs> so. Um, I think, uh, I think I would end on this. Uh, I mentioned that our players are now off. They spent the last eight and a half weeks training uh, with our strength and conditioning team. And I think we all know this is no longer a sprint. This is a marathon. And so training has become so important to understand that the games that you play in November are equally important um, in September. And so you have to have your football team in a position where when they play all the way through the season that they're, that they're not worn down. And, and we think that now with science and the ability to monitor our players, that, that we have trained our players accordingly, that when we play our first game in September, that we'll, we'll, we'll be in a great position uh, to be uh, acclimatized to the weather conditions. We trained outside uh, for the last two and a half months, no indoor training. So our guys are prepared for the weather conditions as well as maintaining that ability to go through a very difficult SEC schedule um, leading into uh, an SEC championship game in December. So understanding the training regimen is so important for these long seasons. And I think our guys clearly understood that and how to train appropriately. Now we've given them a few days off. We report on August 3rd with our first practice uh, on the 4th. 
Um, we are then go into a seven day acclimatization period uh, where we're helmets uh, for two days, shoulder pads for, for three days, uh, and then we can go full contact on the sixth day and then the seventh day. Uh, well, in football terms, the seventh day, they get a day off. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit different in football. <laughs> Um, but that's, that's the schedule, that's how we'll run through it, and that'll lead us up to our first game against Florida State. So we've got a couple more minutes. I'll open it up to a couple of questions uh, and then um, get back to uh, the more important business. So if anybody has a, couple, uh, a question, raise your hand, use your inside voice, yell it out, and uh, we'll do the best we can. Your thoughts on NIL? NIL, name, image, and likeness. I think the intention of name, image, and likeness and, and helping the student athlete with that is outstanding. Um, obviously, uh, it's not regulated in a manner that I think everybody would like to see it regulated. Uh, and we don't want to use it as an inducement. I think those are probably the two things that everybody is concerned with, including myself. Uh, I don't think we want to see it as an inducement in recruiting, and I don't think we want to see it um, used uh, in a manner um, that turns the student athlete into a professional athlete. But, but I'm in favor of name, image, and likeness if done the right way. Yes, sir. Talk quarterbacks for us. Yeah, well, we got plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> so we put a suggestion box down here. <laughs> if, if you could leave your suggestion on the way out. We, <laughs> We, 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 we have four quarterbacks. They all have um, great traits, but different traits. We'll have to use this camp um, to really, you know, vet that out and give them the opportunity to separate themselves from each other. So as, as we're sitting in the offensive staff meeting, you can understand in the spring, we, we, we laid down uh, the offense for the first time. So it was installation of an offense generically speaking, and it wasn't set up for any one quarterback. Um, we're we're going to have to set up now in preseason camp particular plays for the skill set of that quarterback so we can see how they operate the offense. That should give us separation and give us the chance to, um, to name a starting quarterback. You're going to have the offensive line to be able to do it? Yes, we will. Yes, because we knew what our problems were going into uh, the offseason. So we believe we've addressed that. Um, I feel comfortable. Um, there's still work to be done there, uh, but we've put ourselves in a position where the offensive line uh, is going to be uh, better than it was. And um, we've added a couple of players there that I think that are back from injury. Uh, one is back into school. Uh, Bradford is back, Anthony Bradford. Um, uh, Garrett Dellinger is back from injury. That kind of depth with what we had in the spring should put us in a much better position on the offensive line. Two more questions. Something over here on the left. Ladies want to talk about the three technique or the shade. I'm fine with that. I know we talked about press coverage last time. Anything? Nothing? Good? Going once? Going twice? Anything? Right to your right. Uh, right here. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think we have to be able to recruit some depth at that position. Uh, there's no doubt that that was a position that um, it does not fit, you know, my profile. That, that just happens when there's a change in coaching staff. Um, I have a preference to have a deeper, um, uh, I would say, uh, tight end, you know, uh, depth chart. We just don't have that right now, so it's going to take us a recruiting cycle. Uh, but we have guys on board that are going to fill in at that position. We won't have the ability um, to be as multiple as I would like at that position this year. Um, but we'll, we'll manage. Um, we'll be creative. Uh, and you'll see a tight end on the field um, probably every snap. Um, and, and I like to keep a tight end on the field. Yes. Last question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you give a comparison of the LSU facilities when you were in the Yeah, I think these facilities um, rival the best in the country. 
Uh, facilities for me are about um, a couple of things. One, geography, the ability to get to and from. Remember now, the student athlete schedule is so jam packed during the day that geography is important. Getting from the dorms, you know, to the football facility, to academics, uh, to academic support. That geography is outstanding. So having that kind of geography is really good. Then having the support staff and services, you know, our, our training table in terms of uh, our nutrition uh, center is uh, first class. Our ability to train, uh, all of those things, meetings, all of those things are as good as anywhere in the country. Um, and look, we've got the best stadium. I mean, a, a, a night game here, uh, the passion uh, is, is amazing. But I really think facilities are about geography, um, moving the schedule uh, so you can get players to and from where they need to be, and then having the facilities for them because they put in so much time, uh, and LSU is at the top of the food chain. So again, thank you so much. Great turnout today. Um, the passion, the purpose, um, it's so, for me, uh, this is why I wanted to be here at LSU, these kinds of turnouts, and I look forward to seeing everybody uh, in New Orleans, if not back here at our first home game against Southern. Thank you so much.